For example three, I'm going to quickly jot down some different results. Um, you'll want to make sure that you can, of course, work through this problem to get these results yourself following the exact same pattern that we used in examples one and two. But since most of this process is pretty similar to what we did before, we're going to jump ahead to see how we interpret the results for this particular problem. So again, we want to find any local extrema or saddle points for the function. So we'll start off by considering AC minus B squared, which in this case will be 2 times negative 2. minus 0 squared will in this case give us negative 4 which is something less than 0 so we end up with a negative result in this case as soon as we end up with that negative result what this tells us is that f of negative 7 halves positive 7 halves is a saddle point So we found a saddle point, which means there are no extrema for this function, no local extrema for this function. All we have is that saddle point, which again is the idea that our function increasing, is increasing, levels out, and continues increasing, or is decreasing, levels out, and continues decreasing. So the beginning of that problem is similar to examples one and two. It's just the interpretation part, classifying that point that changes a little. Now we do want to spend a little bit more time with example four, since this problem is going to be a little more complex than the previous examples. We'll start things off identically as we have before. We'll take the derivative with respect to x, which will give us 3x squared minus 6y equal to zero. <clears throat> and then we'll find f sub y, so first derivative with respect to y, which will give us negative 6x plus 3y squared, and again, we'll set that equal to 0. Now, what we have are two derivatives that we can't solve as quickly and easily as we can before, or two equations. So what we need to do is consider this first ex expression, the second expression as a system of equations, and somehow solve those to come up with results for x and y. There are multiple different ways to start. But what we're going to do is take this equation and solve it for y, which will end up getting y equals 1 half x squared by subtracting the 3x squared over and then dividing by negative 6. Then what we can do is take the fact that y equals 1 half x squared and substitute that into our expression for f sub y. So we'll rewrite this as negative 6 plus 3 times 1 half x squared that quantity squared equal to 0. So using substitution we've now got this down to an equation in one variable which will be negative 6x plus 3 fourths x to the fourth when we square the 1 half and the x squared equal to 0 we can factor out an x and then just reorder the inside terms here to get x times 3 fourths x cubed minus 6 still equal to 0. So this gives us two different equations to consider or two different possibilities either x is equal to 0 or 3 fourths x cubed minus 6 is equal to 0. So with x equals 0, there's nothing less to sol left to solve there. So x equals 0 is one of our points to consider. For 3 fourths x cubed minus 6 equal to 0, we can add 6 to both sides and then multiply 4 thirds to get x cubed isolated by itself. In this case, that would give us x cubed equals 8. Then taking the cube root of both sides would give us x equals 2. 
So in this case, we end up with two different x values to consider. So to get our, co our corresponding y values, we can come back to this expression y equals 1 half x squared. And we can consider y equals 1 half times 0 squared. So when x is 0, our y value is also going to equal 0, which means one of our critical values to consider will be the point 0, 0. We can also consider y whenever x is equal to positive 2. So y is equal to 1 half times 2 squared, or equal to 2, meaning our second critical point to consider is the point 2 comma 2. So we had a slightly harder task here of finding our two critical points. And now we have more work ahead of us because now we have to consider those values for capital A, B, and C for both the point 0, 0 and the point 2, 2. So we'll start off by considering 0, 0. So A will be the second derivative with respect to x. Evaluated at 0, 0. In this case, the second derivative with respect to x is equal to 6x. Evaluating that at 0, 0. Gives us a value of 0 b is going to be equal to the second derivative with respect to y, evaluated at 0, 0. So if we take the second derivative of this function, so this is the first derivative now taking the second derivative with respect to y, we'll get negative 6 with no variables left over, so nothing to substitute. And then if we calculate c as the second derivative of y, second derivative with respect to y, we'll get f sub y y is equal to 6y. So evaluating that function at 0, 0 gives us a value of 0. So we look at ac minus b squared, which in this case will be equal to 0 times 0 minus negative 6 squared. which in this case will be minus 36. Since that result is less than 0, that tells us that f of 0, 0 is a saddle point. So that gives us one of our results to consider. We know that 0, 0 is a saddle point. And now we have to repeat that exact same process for 2, 2. So jumping through a few of the steps a little quickly here. Again, you'll want to make sure you can evaluate these on your own. But you should get a is equal to 12, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to 12. So using the same process here, except instead of evaluating each function at zero, each derivative at 0, 0, now we'll evaluate it at 2, 2. So then when we look at evaluating AC minus B squared, we'll get 12 times 12 minus the quantity negative 6 squared or minus negative 6 squared. which will give us 108, which is greater than 0. So since that value ended up being positive, we know we either have a maximum or minimum. So we look at our value for a, which is 12. That's greater than 0, which implies that f of 2 comma 2 is a local minimum. So this problem, obviously much more involved. We had to solve a system of equations to get our, in this case, two critical points, which are both 
potential values for our local max or local min. We apply the second derivative test, classify 0, 0 as a saddle point, then repeat that second derivative test with 2, 2, and end up classifying that as a local minimum.